That one. Yeah. And I thought they were going to torture you and make you guys run with that bet. I'm like, uh -huh. I hope they don't have to do that. We're too old. Yeah. I encourage you to stick with hands. Oh, yeah? That's the best. What goes into the training for a mission like that? Endless. Endless. Over and over and over again. Morning, afternoon, and the evening. Uh, and then I think they uh, got it back to one in the day and, and one in the, the evening. Uh, but it was constant training, training. That's the NASA way. They're trying to get you so involved in the procedure that you can't and won't be distracted by your environment and you will focus entirely on the step, first, second step, third step, fourth step, over and over and over again. They sent a boiler plate out to San Diego, a mock capsule, and we rehearsed with the helicopter crew that was gonna be on the Hornet. We did that for about a month and a half before we went to Hawaii and trained with the USS Hornet. And the night drops, they were the worst because the helo pilots didn't want to get very close to the ocean for fear of getting slapped by a wave. So we had a lot of high jumps at night. We only had about two weeks, I think, with the Hornet to train all their personnel, the bosun mates, everybody on the ship had particular jobs and we had to get them. So we had, what, three or four rehearsals a day and then one at yeah, night. night. It was an uh, uh, interesting scenario because uh, uh, Commander Don Jones, who headed up the Hilo Squadron, uh, informed me a couple of days before the actual recovery that um, they were going to allow the closest helicopter to uh, r drop the recovery team in. And I immediately objected to that because uh, uh, Mike and Wes had successfully uh, recovered uh, Apollo 10 and we picked uh, John for the uh, lead swimmer uh, to attach this, uh, uh, the sea anchor because he was the fastest swimmer. So they were the best team. But fortunately, the, as you all recall, the, heel, the uh, command module came in in stable two position upside down. So it took a while for it to upright itself. And during the interim, uh, Commander Jones asked me to come up into the uh, uh, cockpit and he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want you to switch the helicopters. I want the first team in there, the best team, because they had the most experience and they had the fastest swimmer in John. And of course, all the rest was history. Well, let's go back to that day. Let's, um, I mean, you're much, 50 years younger. <laughs> 52. Um, yeah. yeah, 52 years younger. <laughs> like um, and the whole world is watching this. I mean, what's going through your mind? What's, you know, that's a lot of responsibility and, and so on. What's, how are you dealing with it? What's going through your mind? Well, we're NASA trained. So we weren't thinking anything except the procedure that we had to uh, execute. Each of these guys had their own specific tasks. Uh, John had to catch the command module. We were operating in the highest sea states that we'd ever encountered. I, can, I can't swear for these guys, but for me, that's all I was thinking was step one followed by step two, step three. You know, it's unbelievable. You can come from a small town like Neil Armstrong, end up being the first man to walk on the moon. And uh, Mike and all of us, this hand that was handed to us, you know, it's just remarkable, the timing that we were all able to be there and be part of history at a young age. We had rehearsed so oh, much. How many times? That there was just not, I don't know, there wasn't room to be nervous. It was just a matter of getting the job done. I got on board the uh, helicopter and the guy says, welcome aboard, shark bait. That's the first thing he said to me. And I went, thanks a lot, you know. <laughs> well, I was the youngest one, so they gave me the job to jump in the water first. First test. So I was shark bait. And if I didn't die, they could come in afterwards. <laughs> I got to look in the window and I got a thumbs up. Yeah. And I put the sea anchor on and these two gentlemen jumped in a little bit later with a 200 pound flotation collar and then we all three put that around and then the rafts are dropped one raft was inflated and attached to the capsule where Clancy would uh, help the astronauts out and then the second raft was dropped upwind 25 yards and inflated where we would sit and then Clancy would come in and uh, drop in the water and the bank would fall in with the biological isolation garments for all the astronauts and himself and when he put that on, Mike went to the capsule with his big arms, pulled the 
second wrapped in close so Clancy could get out and, uh, and then we went back out 25 yards because of the decontamination procedures. We had to be on open scuba at all the time. They were watching us in helicopters. So we were upwind 25 yards until all that procedure was completed because of the safety precautions. And the reason for that was because NASA uh, was concerned that the astronauts could bring back a lunar pathogen uh, that would be detrimental to life as we know it. I mean, if you think the fatality rate for Ebola coupled with a respiratory component like uh, corona, um, you could imagine the disaster that, that would befold. So the astronauts had to be quarantined from the moment they entered the Earth's atmosphere until they were getting into the uh, mobile quarantine facility that was on the deck of the hangar deck of the uh, USS Hornet. Um, so not only did they have to wear an isolation garment when they got out, of the command module, but the inside of the command module was littered with moon dust that they tracked in from their uh, suits on the surface of the moon. So the possibility was, and it was real, that the big suits now would be contaminated with moon dust. So NASA came up with uh, a decontamination procedure, and what I had was a white uh, uh, car wash mitt, and you, I wasn't supposed to spray the, the bleach solution on the suits. Uh, because it was very uh, noxious to smell, of course, and we didn't want to have that around their uh, face mask their, uh, in case they breathed it in, they might get sick, which would be a disaster out there at sea. What I did was put the uh, bleach on the mitt and then wash them down, and then they turned around and uh, I don't remember which one astronaut was, put the mitt on, and he washed me down, and then they all went up in the Billy Pugh net into the uh, helicopter. But once the astronauts are up and on the ship, your job's not over. You're still mm -hmm. responsible for <laughs> the capsule and, and the cargo because it collected moon rocks. But, I mean, how long, how long were you guys out there for? And, and forever. <laughs> forever. That took we forever. We were, because Nixon was coming to the ship to visit, you know, after they'd picked up the astronauts and taken them to the ship, uh, we were chopped liver. So we, we probably sat on that spacecraft for an hour and a half or, or so and now the rumor is we played king of the we did command we did. king of the mountain did, did king, we? king of the command module. And, and i am the king, king. <laughs> i stayed up there the longest because these guys were doing uncoordinated attacks one at a time <laughs> but then west took charge and the three of them were coming up at once so I was doomed, but fortunately the Hornet came over the horizon and I was able to exercise leadership and say, time to get ready for the recovery of the command module. Oh, golly. The ship put out a whale boat. We put all our scuba gear inside and so forth. Yeah. And then the sharks appeared. They had rifles, but they didn't shoot. We, Thank several goodness times, they didn't. Several times oh, what a <laughs> through mess. rehearsals, we had to jump in our rafts because the lights from the helicopters at night would attract them. And all of a sudden, Mike would see one, and yeah. he got in that boat pretty quick. And I sounded like a seven-year-old girl at a birthday <laughs> party, hanging on the side of the capsule, screaming, shark, 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 shark. So we'd all get out of the water then. So, If you really think closely about this, there are an infinite number of ways that things can go, go wrong. I mean, you can be the best engineer in the world, a scientist, etc. You can't think of everything. And so uh, uh, it went amazingly, miraculously well. Nothing got snagged. We didn't get a rope around our necks. We didn't, you know, you name it. There was a little tomfoolery on Apollo 10. Uh. These two fellows can tell you what they did. <laughs> 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 the backstory for this you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, while I was out there, things were very dull while we were waiting to get picked up by the ship. And I just unzipped my suit and I pulled out a big hippie flower like this and I put it right on the front windshield of the Apollo craft. NASA gave me the Royal Navy ream job for doing that. And so when Apollo 11 got here, we were told nothing on the capsule. So John wound up wearing the flower, and is famous for that. 
I all was the, uh, the low man on the totem pole. I was not going to be a career man. I was, <laughs> I was an E3, 20 years old. So what could they do with me? Yeah. Well, he disobeyed my order, as a matter of fact, because <laughs> I told the guys, no appliques on your wetsuits. And I, I, did, I don't remember that. Well, of course you don't, <laughs> because you put it on. <laughs> but he put it on just before the uh, c command module was recovered by the Hornet. And he's standing up on top <laughs> in his uh, pose there. And I, I didn't see it. I didn't know. I didn't know it until I looked at the cover of Life magazine and I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> but he had done such a perfect job. You know, there wasn't any reason to, uh, besides it was a done deal. The Navy frogmen are kind of known to do things like that, though. I, we had to live up to our reputation. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that um, you can, that that you guys know that like the general public doesn't know? Like, what are what are some of the <laughs> what, are, mean, what are what are some of the things that won't get you in trouble now? You mean the gold foil? Oh, see, I didn't. <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> so, so there are some secrets yet to be told, but not yet, is what you're saying. No, I think there's no secrets. There's no secrets. But no. Uh, we were out there in the middle of the ocean, and you know, souvenirs are important sometimes. And we knew once that capsule got aboard the ship, everybody else would get their souvenirs. So we just took ours first. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm proud to have been part of uh, the Navy team dedicated to bringing the astronauts home safely, and I'm proud that we did. That was a, uh, an exciting decade. I mean, there was a lot of controversy in the 60s, but uh, the space program had a uniting effect for mankind, period. Uh, and so it was exciting. And this all started before I was, uh, you know, even in the Navy. And I used to watch the, uh, the, the swimmers go into the water and, and rescue the spacecraft. And I, I said, boy, that is so cool. Never ever thinking that I would be a part of it. But this, this was a decade. Actually, it started with Sputnik even before then. And so uh, it, was, it was exciting. Back in the hometown, when I enlisted in the Navy, a lot of my friends were making fun. You know, it was the anti-war movement and so forth. And, you know, by joining the Navy, it, there was so much that happened in four years. I'll never regret my four years, even though I went to Vietnam twice, but in between being a part of history. So I really appreciate my opportunity to serve my country. Now I go back and my friends kind of envy what happened in my life, but back then they, they kind of shunned me. Yeah, like the rest of the guys, I'm just super proud of the time we had out there. We had the ability and the training and uh, pulled it off. And I've just always felt part of the first man on the moon, even though the title was shark bait, it was still a good, good time. <laughs>